Yo, what is up guys, Grim here, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking you through everything you need to know to complete the new 3.9 Conquerors of the Atlas all the way up until endgame. So the new system is quite different to the old system and has a lot of things that are just kind of brand new or aren't particularly obvious at first glance. So you're going to figure all that stuff out, how to take it from a blank atlas all the way up to a max atlas and a fight with the final boss. So let's get into it and hopefully I can answer you guys questions. So to begin with, obviously we're starting out in the center of the atlas here, and your atlas will start off pretty much blank. And that's fine, and I'll take you through what to do first. So the first thing you want to do as normal is start mapping. Try and get up a bit of a map pool, like do a two, tier 1s, do some tier 2s, do some tier 3s. Focus on getting your map completion as high as you can. There's around 90 white maps on the atlas, ranging from T1 to T4, and you want to try and focus on filling them out as fast as possible, whether that's using POE trade to buy maps, just doing them yourself, or trading with other players one for one. So that's going to be the first kind of board of call. And once you've got a decent map pull up, you can begin the Conqueror's quest line. So all the Conqueror's quest line is, is the following. The Atlas is divided up into eight different regions, and this is going to be very important. To spawn a Conqueror and their influence, which looks like this, you can see I have some green influence up here, all you need to do is run maps in the sector that you want that influence to spawn in with the correct parameters. So what are those parameters? Initially, when you start off your atlas, you're going to want to jump into one of the four outer corners, and your quest text will indicate that that's what you want to do as well. So that's the first thing you want to do. You've got your atlas bonus up, you've got a bit of a map pool, now you want to pick one of the corners and throw your weight behind it. You want to run maps only in that area until the influence spawns, so it'll look like that or one of the other different colors that your conqueror may have. So let's say it spawned up here and you've got the green influence, then all you need to do is run three different named maps in that area to have the conqueror event start. So you could run, for example, like Castle Ruins, Academy, and Vile Pyramid after the influence spawns, and you will then have your quest updated. So with the quest updated, what do you do then? Be sure to come over and talk to Officer Kirak. That is key. You won't be able to start the quest until you talk to him. He'll be in your hideout, so have a chat to him. He'll then ask you to go over to Zana and talk to Zana, and she'll be like, okay, we're ready to take down a Conqueror's Citadel. So what a Conqueror's Citadel is, is a pretty much a new endgame fight, which is similar to an Elder Guardian on the white tier level. So not too difficult, most players should be able to do it, I was able to do it on a bow character with no gear, so it's pretty easy. So all you have to do is come up to Zana, she'll start a fresh map up, which is not rolled, and you'll get that map for free. You can either choose to clear it or run straight to the boss, you're going to kill the boss, and then you will be granted a Watchstone. Now, what watchstones are used for is socketing in watchstone towers. Now, you may not see watchstone towers when you start up your atlas. Basically, the way these work is as you do maps and complete them, they will unlock. As you see here, this one's connected to temple. So you would do the temple map and it would unlock. But a cool thing about the Conqueror quest line is that it will unlock automatically after you get it for the first watchstone in the area anyway. So you don't need to worry too much about these, they will come as you progress this storyline. So you've got your first watchstone, what are you going to do now? So the next thing you need to do is receive the other three colors. So you can see here that there is red, green, gold, and blue. You need one of each to kind of get to the next tier of progression. So that's pretty interesting. So the next thing you want to do is pick another corner. The one that you just did is not one you want to be running maps in anymore. At the start, the quest dictates you to go to one of each of the corners and spam maps in a similar fashion. So let's say you did this corner up here. You now want to go to one of the other three corners and start spamming maps in there and repeat the process to get one of the next colors. After you get the next color, you want to go over to the other two, rinse, repeat until you have four of the first colored watchstones. So at this point, you're probably wondering what to do with your watchstones, where to put them and how to kind of use them. So initially before this, you don't need to really socket them, but if you want to start building up your yellow map pool, which is very important, you may want to consider socketing them. 
So the socketing I would recommend doing is just socketing one of each in the kind of areas of the atlas to get all of these areas up to yellow tier. And the reason for this is because you want a nice kind of ramp up through the tiers. You wanna be accumulating yellow maps and there's a really important reason for that which is coming up next. So I'd recommend you socketing the watchstones all in the different colors in different areas so that you can get different maps in different areas as well. So something like that, you'll have four areas at level one on the Atlas. So after you do all this, you've killed four Conquerors, you have four Watchstones, you're going to want to get another four. And to do this, it's going to change up a little bit. You still have the same way of farming and activating the Conquerors, so you spam the maps in the zone and then do three different maps, but there's a new rule in play now. And this one catches a lot of people out if you're not aware. So you can see here, if you open up your atlas, there's this kind of inventory system for the watchstones. And it'll say if you've obtained it or if you haven't obtained it. So we'll get into the next thing though, which is region level. So you can see here, mine says region level four required to spawn an exile. The region level correlates to the amount of watchstones in that region. So let's say I wanted to spawn a watchstone in Haywork Hamlet. I would need four watchstones in this area to be able to spawn a conqueror there. If I don't have four watchstones in there, it's actually not possible to ever spawn a conqueror. So you could spam hundreds and hundreds of maps in this area, but if it doesn't have four watchstones in it, you're not going to be able to spawn a conqueror. So definitely pretty interesting there and a very key critical point that comes into play on the second round of watchstones. But on the first round of watchstones, the reason this isn't required is because it'll actually say region level zero required to spawn in exile. So if you notice that it says region level one, two, or anything like that, you need to make sure that you put in some watchstones in the area you're target farming and that will get the job done. So now let's move on to the next area. What do you do after you get those first four? You want to be doing the same thing, but you can do it anywhere now. Use the rules that I just set in place and put your watchstones in areas you want to target farm. And that'll take you up to the next four watchstones, which will give you a total of eight. And at this point, you probably want to start socketing them in a fashion, which will allow you to get to the next tier of maps. So you can get a level two area here, and this will give you like T8, 9, all that kind of stuff like that. So you want to always have like a smooth kind of pathway up to the higher tiers. So that you always get the higher highest tier possible to drop from your atlas. That's really, really important. While also maintaining the correct level of the kind of like area that you're trying to get that influence in. So definitely pretty key there. So this is going to be a similar process for the third round of watchstones taking you up to 12 and the last round of watchstones taking you up to 16. So you're kind of gonna ramp it up there. So when you get to the third set of watchstones, you wanna put put some, um, some jewels in there. Um, you know, like throw another one over here. So you get some red maps, make sure that curve up the tiers is going quite nicely and you'll be in pretty good shape. So you continually spam the maps and a very important thing to note with these maps is that it must be tier appropriate. You can't spawn the influence by running, for example, white maps in this area if you're trying to spawn a red level um, conqueror. So you must make sure the tier is correct um, and that goes for the one map to spawn it as well as the three maps um, which kind of like get it going. So definitely some pretty critical information there. So after you have 16 watchstones and you kill the 16th Conqueror, what's going to happen is that Zana is going to say there's something up and that you can now challenge Sirius, which is the fifth Conqueror. Now, this fight is extremely hard and I don't personally know anyone who's actually killed it yet on day four. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge, but you can give it your best shot. You may be able to kill him. You may not, uh, but that's pretty uh, all I got for that. So with that out of the way, that is the first 16 watchstones and we'll take you all the way up to your Peewee's Endgame, which is the new serious fight. Um, after that, you can acquire a further 16, but the rules have changed a little bit. So you still need to pay attention to the, um, the level four and like, you know, like all the levels in the region levels and all that kind of stuff. But most likely all of the watchstones will now say it requires level four and all that kind of things. But when you get to this point, you do need to now start considering a few more things because um, you can actually still spawn watchstones in an area even if you've obtained all the ones in that area. So let's say this area over here, it says obtained and there's four obtains. If I spam um, kind of maps in here and it's got four watchstones in it, I can still spawn influence in there, but when I kill the conqueror, because I've already obtained all the watchstones, I actually won't get one. So you now need to start planning around that. So for those last few ones, you want to really be making sure that you target farm the correct Conqueror in the correct area. So for example, in this area, this um, new Vestia, I have only the blue Watchstone left to get, so that's the one that I'm going for now. 
Now to do that, um, when you've got a clean atlas and you haven't spawned any of the conquerors, the first thing you should do is knock out ones that you only have one slot on. So for example, in New Vestia, let's say I haven't killed any conquerors, I'd want to spam mass in that area to make sure that I get the influence on there as opposed to anywhere else to get that blue watchstone and not get stuck with not having it. So I know this might all be a bit confusing, but there is a few more things to note. In the after, like down to the post serious stage, you no longer have the rule that you can do three maps and receive the Conqueror. You can get the influence the same way, but it now is a random amount of maps to actually spawn the Conqueror fight in, which is definitely a change and it's going to make it a lot more difficult to kind of progress from 16 to 32. So with all of that through, we'll do a quick recap here and then we'll move on to the Awakener bonus and the Awakener level. So. What you want to do is start off, get some Atlas bonus. Next up, you want to do the four corners using the rules that I described. After that, you can choose any of the areas and complete them and get their watchstones from them, assuming that it's the correct watchstone tower level and you also don't have that watchstone already. Next up, you want to get all of those watchstones up to 16 and have a go at the serious fight. And after that, of course, you can move on to the 32 watchstones, um, assuming that you're ready to grind and happy with some RNG. So with all that done, hopefully you guys understand everything that there is to do with watchstones, and we'll now talk about the benefits of watchstones and the Awakener bonus. So after you put four watchstones in an area, you will get what's called the Awakener bonus. And this can scale up to level 8, which would be 8 watchtowers with 4 watchstones in them. And as you can see here, this level uh, kind of increases the difficulty of the Atlas, but provides you some nice benefits on top of that. So you can see here that, you know, Unique Bosses has more life. Um, you have a chance to drop a Shaper and Elder Guardian map from the boss. If it's T14+, plus, you have a chance to drop currency, um, you know, Uniques, all that kind of stuff, which is pretty cool if you ask me. So pretty, pretty nice, and it's definitely worth doing, and a lot of Atlas strategies will revolve around kind of target farming and increasing this to the highest level possible. So definitely pretty interesting. The other thing that happens though when you get the Awakener bonus is you now have the option to get Awakener bonus objectives, which is just like the traditional Atlas bonus, but you can get it again, but it only gives half a percent here instead of a full percent. So this is definitely very, very powerful and allows you to go above 200% Atlas bonus, which is very, very good indeed. Now, there is one little detail here. You can't just do the map again. You must do it at its maximum tier. So that means you would have socketed four watchstones in there and you can get the map appropriate for that area. So for example, for Courthouse, you'd get a T15 Courthouse and you'd complete it. There's another little detail here though, that you must have the correct Awakener bonus level um, kind of active. So you need five watchtowers with four watchstones in them to be able to get this Awakener bonus when you complete the map. Um, now, if you don't have that and you complete the map, you won't get the bonus completion. But obviously some of these are actually at level one. This one's at level two. So you can start picking up some of them and um, you can kind of get a little bit more Atlas bonus. So with all that out of the way, that is how to fill out your atlas, kind of do it step by step, take you all the way up to end game and past end game, and kind of some of the benefits around it. Obviously there's no strategy in this video, but I just wanted to make a video to kind of make sure everyone understood how it worked and how to get to the end boss fight. So with all that out of the way, leave all your questions below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.